here's an E. And right now, there's a whole bunch of those cities that are singing. You can see those cities that are singing on the right-hand side. Now, I can move the vowel sound with this circle here. This episode is being supported by Tape It. If you currently use voice notes to record your ideas, you should try Tape It instead. So here's what I did, right? Towards the end of, of 2022, I realized that the audience choir was something that not only was was really important for me and something I wanted to use in my songs, but I also wanted for there to be a way for me to play it on the keyboard. Um, there aren't that many choir patches that I've found that I really think are cool. A lot of them sound really weird, like or woolly or fake or, or like too clean or, you know, do ba do a lot of that kind of, kind of thing. And it's, it can all be fun, but but I, I really wanted to find a way of, of building the audience choir into some kind of virtual instrument. I wondered if it was possible and turns out it was possible. Um, but it, it took quite a lot of, you know, quite a lot of work. So I've been building this, this instrument with Native Instruments, which is one of the leading sort of VI companies that there is. And Native Instruments and I have been putting together this, uh, yeah, this this uh, instrument. Let me see if I can pull it up right now. Um, okay, so here it is. I think you can think you can see this now. Jake, we call it Audience Choir. There's me. Oh. And um, and so, yeah, this, this instrument was actually created by a bunch of sort of single notes, which I, I started to ask the audience for. Hey, could you sing me a, ah, oh, and they go, ah, oh, uh, ooh, um, you know. So I got ah, uh, um, ooh, and e, four vowel sounds on every note across a, approximately three octave range. Um, one of the amazing things about the audience choir is that it auto shepherd tones. And what I mean by that is by the time you've gone up an octave, some people for whom it's too high have dropped down the octave. And then those who can still sing continue singing until it gets too high for them. Then they drop down. So it perpet- you can perpetually rise forever, and and it, it's an inexhaustive range because people, all like they, they they correct themselves. So um, it, it's just one of those amazing things where this note and this note sound pretty similar, but actually the notes have gone up. But then some people have dropped down. You know. So anyway, you you, you see the interface here. Um, so I can play play chords here. Right. And what you see in, in the plugin is that as I'm playing different notes, different parts of the, the venue light up, which is really neat. Um, and also what you see here on the right of the screen, this is all, all the all the active cities that are being played. If you, like so many of our guests, use voice notes to capture your ideas, you will love Tape It. It's the iPhone recording app designed specifically for musicians and songwriters. With Tape It, you can record straight from your lock screen, set markers, add notes, and even include photos of settings. Plus, there's Cloud Sync, you can import your old voice notes, and to stay on top of it all, Tape It has great labeling features like automatic instrument detection. And all of the above is free. If you currently use voice notes, switching to Tape It is a no-brainer. And there's more. If you upgrade to Tape It Pro, it uses two microphones on your iPhone, along with gentler dynamic compression to give a much more natural sound than any of the usual apps. And we have a huge offer for you. 50% off Tape It Pro if you upgrade now. Just go to the app and select Tape Notes in the onboarding process or click the link in the description below. And so as I play one note, here you go, here's, here's, an, here's an E. And right now, there's a whole bunch of those cities that are singing. You can see those cities that are singing on the right-hand side. Now, I can move the vowel sound with this circle here. So now it's an, now it's an mm. Super awesome. That can open up to an oo. That's an e. I think R is probably my favorite. It's just like, whoa, you know? That's how it feels to be in the venue. It does. I mean, this whole experience feels like <laughs> I'm back <laughs> right. in Brixton. Right. And so it's, it's an amazing interface. Um, down the bottom of the keyboard here. Oh, yep. Stomps and claps. Snaps. Claps. These were recorded in Copenhagen, I think. They were just at the best venue. There's a venue there called Vega. Vega, I think it's called. And it was just the like the floor was like hollow, and the acoustic was dry enough. It's like, I mean, that's the best stomp sample I've ever heard. <laughs> you know, so I get to really enjoy this. I've used it all over the album. Snaps. Yeah, maybe. No. Just for for good measure. 
bing bong, bing bong, I get balconies going bing bong. And then these are, these are single instances of chords. And this is, these are whole triads recorded. So like, you know, in the middle of a, of a song or an audience choir, you take one triad and that's how it sounds, which is different from this, which is more like I've recreated them with three, three different single notes. So you, you have both sides of the spectrum. You can control the volume, the mod wheel, classic, classic uh, behavior here. Um, which is wonderful. And you can even go into advanced settings and change the tuning system, which I'm a huge fan of. It can it can do like home mode, just intonation and adaptive tuning systems and things like that. But it's it's quite a simple instrument, but it, it's come in so handy for me. Um, and I, I really, I love, you know, the humming one, for, for example. It I just, just feels like I'm conducting an audience. It's, it's a wonderful, wonderful feeling. So yeah, that in, in a nutshell, that's that that's what's going on. And so this instrument has given me access to, you know, reconstructing and, and combining all sorts of different things across the album. One thing that's I find interesting about it is that it, it doesn't reward dense chords. So if I play like that sounds like that sounds like a mess. Even though if I play that on the piano, that's like a delicious Jacobian voicing. But here, it it's that's just like but triad works fine. Triad works fine. Four-part tries kind of the limit. Even that chord, it starts to sound really woolly. So, and that's how it feels when you conduct a room as well. And you can't get too many parts moving. So, it's really forced me to kind of distill my my intention um, musically and and on mass and and sort of figure out the, the best results and and how to get them out of people. That often come from very 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 simple gestures. You know, music in, inherently is very simple as a language. It's it's just all the axes of it, we, we all understand intuitively. Big, small, right? Wide, narrow, many, few, loud, quiet, high, low. These are really, really simple things. And if you just show them clearly, high, low, big, small, loud, quiet, you know, it, it's just about finding the simplest possible gesture to express that. Ooh.